Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. Uh, this is about Frank and Mary. If you've been to my presentations at the library or in other towns, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Northborough, they want to stay right here. So the question is, who are the people they need to know? What are the programs they need to know about? in order to stay right here and live kind of happily ever after. So my wonderful co-host, Liz Tridiak, who uh, joined Northbro, it seems like ages ago, like about a year ago, but no one's actually ever seen her. She actually may be living in California at this point. No one really knows. Uh, as the senior center director, she finds all these great guests. And we've actually had this particular guest on before. But as I mentioned to him, his ratings were so high that people wanted him back. So. We've invited him back. Who, who do we have today, Liz? <laughs> Arthur, today we have Andy Dowd, who is the town clerk here in Northborough. So welcome, Andy. Thank you for having me back. Welcome Thanks. back. We had to have you on today because there's some current event ha events happening here in town that I think everyone needs to know about and get informed. Um, so but first, before we get into any of that, for people who are tuning in and haven't actually seen Andy before, or they don't know him, never utilized the town clerk. Um, what is it that you do? How long have you been doing it? So the town clerk's office is um, responsible for all the vital records, um, which would be birth, death, and marriage records for um, folks in the community. Um, we have lots of other historic records, town meeting records, you know, town reports, um, a lot of documents that go back, you know, way back to the town's um, founding in 1766. So we have some really cool old stuff, which is uh, which is fun. Um, people come in, you know, to apply for a marriage license, to get a dog license, um, and, you know, maybe have something notarized. Um, I'm also a justice of the peace, so some folks um, ask me to perform their marriage ceremony, which is um, kind of a cool part of the job. Um, so we interact with the, uh, the residents a lot um, in several different ways. And, and a lot of times we just serve as a central information point for people when they're not sure who to call, they would likely call my office and uh, either get information directly or we'll um, direct them further on to other town staff. So um, I like that interaction with the public, although we, our building's still closed. We're, uh, we're here to answer phone calls, emails, and uh, we meet people at the door frequently and uh, we see Shortly, we'll, uh, we'll be reopening to the public, which I look forward to. So, Isn't it great to be the guy in town who's supposed to know all the trivia answers? Like all, right? Every, right? It's great. It's great. He I has try. all the knowledge. I try. And you, and you, you had asked, um, sorry, the, uh, I've been in this position for about 17 years, and I've actually worked for the town for 34. So um, I've been around for a while, so that does help with those uh, trivia questions that come up. I don't know everything, but I try to to know quite a bit so you know where to find the answers exactly <laughs> recently arthur andy showed me the um the vault that's downstairs there's actually a vault in the town hall that stores all the historical records so that was pretty cool so is, but, so is that like where all the bodies are buried you know you always say like where are all the bodies buried this is that's right all the, all the politicians. Sorry. Yeah, actually what Andy was helping me research for that um, particular trip to the vault. Maybe we can do a whole show on that. Well, I'm not going to give it away yet. But anyways, Andy, coming up, we have two really important events in town. Um, first, coming up this weekend is the annual town meeting. Can you tell us a little bit about what went into planning that and what it actually is? Sure. So the uh, annual town meeting um, is typically held um, annually every year at the end of April. This year, we did move the date slightly um, because of the ongoing pandemic concerns. And the reason for the move is so we're having it on Saturday during the day. It's typically a night meeting. Um, and we'll be outside on the football field. So it's going to be a safer environment. Same exact um, layout as we did last year. Um, so the the background behind town meeting and what goes into it, it's really almost a year long process. Um, all the different boards and committees, town staff um, work to put together items um, that will be approved and voted on at town meeting. Um, things like the budgets for the various for the town itself, for the schools, um, for the Aspen Valley Regional District School, um, capital projects um, that you know boards and committees and staff determine it's time to purchase you know a new police cruiser 
or equipment for the public works department, for example. Um, and as well, sometimes there's also items on the, um, the warrant, which defines what's discussed at town meeting um, that would make a change to um, say a zoning bylaw, for example, that's a typical item and we'll have some of those this year. Um, and some other bylaws that may change and define how um, things are, um, are done in, in town. So that's a general overview of what happens and how it all comes together. It's a lot of work ahead of time. Um, and then the culmination of that um, happens on that one day. It's, it's much like a wedding, um, really, if you think about it in that respect, that you do lots and lots and lots of planning, and then you finally reach that big day when everything um, goes off without a hitch, of course. So uh, lots that goes into the background of it. So where can people find information on what's going to be discussed at town meeting? So all the information is posted on the town's website. So if people visit um, visit that, and I know there'll be a link um, displayed um, for them. Um, there's a whole um, variety of information about the town meeting, including that um, warrant that I mentioned. And it's actually the whole town meeting warrant booklet that's there in a PDF form that anybody can view and um, download and print if they wish. Um, and that, um, lists all of the articles that will be covered and some other information um, reports about the budget um, and things like that um, as i mentioned that all went into that and of course we'll have printed copies of that material available um, on saturday um, when folks come if they'd like to have a hard copy to reference during the during the meeting great and and, and once again where where is it happening what time does it start you know the kind of logistically what is the sure. how does it all work you know so the uh, the meeting is is always held at algonquin regional high school which is located at 79 bartlett street um as i mentioned we're outside again this year so um the outdoor venue is on the football field um, which is directly behind the building um and the meeting itself will start at 9 a.m um, people can start checking in um, for the meeting as early as 8 a.m um, and we'll have plenty of seating available. Um, we'll have free water. We'll have plenty of hand sanitizer. We have um, plenty of masks available if folks, um, you know, forget to bring theirs. Um, so um, the meeting will be there on the football field. There'll be two um, entrances, the main entrance adjacent to the um, stands where people typically enter the football area. Um, and then is on the west end of the field near the snack shack, um, there'll be a second entrance where voters can check into the meeting. And that's much like when you go to vote at an election, you check in by your name and address and you're issued a designated card, which allows you to vote on an article that comes up. Great. So this is Saturday morning. What would you say to someone who thinks, you know, they just don't want to take time out of their Saturday to attend a town meeting? Why is it important? Well, it is, um, town meeting is, you know, a unique um, thing that happens in New England. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a process um, that's um, been followed for many, many years. And it's what, you know, many communities utilize to fully approve their budgets and their expenditures for the whole year. Um, the total town budget is over $70 million. So, you know, we are, really are a fairly large corporation. Um, and there's a lot of pieces that go into that, um, you know, for all the different divisions and services that are offered and equipment that's needed and staff and so forth. So it is important um, for those folks um, that choose to attend and, um, and actually cast their vote to approve um, those things. But as I mentioned, a lot of the legwork goes in ahead of time and people can certainly watch and tune in and attend other meetings in advance of the meeting, even if they may not be able to attend the town meeting itself. Um, so, and it will also be live streamed on cable. So that's a good option for folks that um, just want to be able to view it and kind of see what what's going on and what's involved in the process. I'm, I'm just curious, typically how many people come? If, if, if you, you've been you've been doing this for a long time, so you've seen a lot of town meetings, right? Right. So it, it varies somewhat, um, but, you know, consistently we probably have, you know, two to three hundred people attend. Um, and there's variations in that last year, obviously, were we were, you know, really in the midst of the pandemic and we ended up with 165 people attend that outdoor meeting last year a bit on the low side but understandable given the circumstances um you know we've had as many as four or five hundred if there's a particular item for example when they are getting ready to approve a large project like to build a school to build a fire station um, you know, a large purchase that, you know, people are more interested in, um, in weighing in their opinions on, you know, that sometimes drives the attendance. Um, but two to 300 is a typical turnout. And, and if I were, a, if I'm Frank or Mary, and I'm like, 
how long am I going to be at this meeting? If I go, right, is this going to be, you know, I, I'm a good citizen, but I don't want to die at the at the Algonquin football field, you know. So yeah. and that's you give, give us, if you were if you were guessing, you know, mm -hmm. how long are these usually? Yeah, so the um, I would say a, approximately four to five hours. Um, it may be shorter yeah. than that. It's really up to the to the attendees um, uh, how long the meeting lasts, because a lot of that has to do with how many questions are asked. Um, you know, if there's any debate back and forth. And sometimes, you know, one question or one article rather can generate a lot of activity, which takes up some time. And that's the choice the people that are attending make, that they want to devote that extra time. Um, you know, we could probably get through the meeting by noontime um, if it goes along quickly without a whole lot of questions. Um, so it's really hard to say exactly. Last year, we finished up at about 1.45 with the same 9 a.m. start. Um, so, you know, a similar number of uh, Warren articles this year. We have 40 articles. There are a few more than that last year. So uh, it's a bit of a commitment and we understand that. And um, people can also choose to just attend part of the meeting. Um, you know, they don't have to remain there. We don't lock them in, certainly. And we do let folks come in late. Um, it's not a problem. Um, so we're there all day to check voters in um, as the meeting continues. So um, and again, it's broadcast live on cable if you want to keep track of it that way. And, and for the Frank and Mary, I'm just just for the mention to the Frank and Marys who've been here forever. Of course, they've been here forever, so they've probably gone. If you're new to town, or, or especially if you moved into town, maybe because you had relatives or whatever, and you're like, "What is this about?" These are just very entertaining. They're very entertaining, and and they totally set you know you set all the rules for the town. It's literally like a little legislature, and it's the only time that stuff can really get done. And, and, and there's tremendous deference, I can tell you as a lawyer, there's tremendous deference given to town meetings at the state level. Very few things that happen at town meeting ever get overruled at the state level because the presumption is, hey, everybody's there. You know, the voters are here and the voters are, are here to speak. So I think it's a wonderful thing. It's just wonderful. Great. Now, Andy, on the town warrant, so if Frank or Mary finds the warrant online and they print it off, does the meeting usually follow the um, warrant in terms of what's being discussed? Yes. First, second, third? Typically, um, the, the meeting would follow um, in order the articles presented, so one through 40. Um, it, they can, if they choose, someone could ask and take a vote, um, and again, it's up to the, those there. Um, if they wish to take an article out of order for whatever reason. Um, you know, on occasion that may ha happen if there's a big project um, on the on the warrant and it's getting late in the evening where we typically meet at night and people want to see that. They've got a big crowd there and they'd like to see it voted on then. Um, so they'd ask that that be taken up um, early. Um, it's not typical that that, that happens in general. It's going to follow, um, you know, in order one through 40. Um, and I should mention also that the, um, the moderator has has um, co condensed a few of the articles into what they call a consent agenda, which basically means we take one vote that covers four or five different articles at once. And that's just a, a way to help expedite the meeting given the COVID concerns. Um, we did the same thing last year. Um, it's just some of the articles that typically pass without um, much debate. That's a way to just make things go quick, quicker. So that'll be done again this year. Okay, so the other big thing going on is town elections. When is it? What are we voting on? What do we need to know? Sure, so right after um, town meeting is the annual town election, and that's going to be held on Tuesday, May 11th. And the polls will be open um, regular hours, um, which will be 7 a.m. until 8 p.m., so a full regular day. Um, and that all the voting in Northborough is now held at the Mellican Middle School. That's at 145 Lincoln Street. All four of our voting precincts um, go there to vote. And we've done that for a couple of years now. So hopefully people are accustomed to the one single location. Um, and it, at the town election, what they're voting on this year um, are just elected offices. Um, and those elected offices in Northborough are for the moderator who actually oversees town meeting. And then members of the Board of Selectmen, um, there are two seats on the Board of Selectmen up this year for re-election. Um, we have four candidates that are running for those um, two seats, one incumbent, and then three other folks that are um, running. The planning board um, will be electing two members um, to their board. Again, we have four people running for the two seats. And then there are two school committee um, races, the K-8 um, Northborough School Committee 
they have two um, seats that are up and they have two candidates. Um, so right now there's no contest there. And I should say that wouldn't change because deadlines to, uh, to put your name in the hat um, if, per se have passed. Um, and then on the regional school committee, the North Pro South Pro Regional School Committee, which is separate, they have three candidates that are running for their two seats that are open. So that's what folks will be voting on. Again, all that information is posted on the website. Um, so you can um, check ahead of time. I know there's been several uh, different news publications and cable shows done um, with candidates, um, you know, that have discussed their, um, their ideas and why they're running. So there's lots of resources for folks to learn a bit more. Um, some years there might be a question on the ballot, such as if we're looking to build a school or um, make a really big purchase that requires a ballot vote. That's not the case this year. So it's just voting for the elected offices um, that folks will be there for. And is there any early voting? Is, is there any way to vote early or yeah, is, do you really need to be there? Right? Excellent question. There is. Um, so last year, because of the pandemic, um, the state legislature authorized um, early voting by mail for everybody, um, which is continuing. Um, this this year for the town elections. So all um, voters are entitled to vote by mail if they choose, if they're not comfortable voting in person on election day. Um, the deadline to request a mail-in ballot, and you have to um, submit a written request, is actually Wednesday, May 5th. So there is obviously a deadline ahead because we need time to be able to get that physically mailed out to the voter. And then they need to return that voted ballot um, by the close of polls on May 11th, so 8 p.m. Tuesday, May 11th, in order for it to be counted. Um, and they can either do that, um, they can do everything by U.S. mail as far as sending in the request, they can drop it off and we have actually two different drop boxes at town hall a nice new drive up one that's right out front you don't even have to leave your car you can place a written request in there um, or we can accept those by email any signed um, written request may be submitted by email and again all that information is on the on the website um, and on the return end same thing once you do receive your ballot we have to mail it out legally by law the ballot has to be mailed to the voter but then once the voter receives it they can return it either by mail or they can drop it in the Dropbox. Um, so it's, if you get it late, um, it's really a great idea to utilize that Dropbox. That way you'll ensure that we get it and we'll be checking that box, you know, at 8 p.m. Tuesday night to make sure we capture any of the last minute arrivals and they would get counted, so. Hmm. Do you mind if I ask, I'm just curious, because I know that, that, you know, I'm thinking about the last fall's election, right? And then all of that around the Dropboxes and everything else. And can you, can you get you have can you give us a sense of how many people ended up voting, you know, use using that process as opposed to kind of coming in on the on the day and voting and, and, and what you, and what do you expect? Do you expect once again, you watch these a lot for a long time? Do you think that th that experience will really have have caused a, hist a historical change? And I know we're going to find out pretty soon, but I'm just curious. Sure. Um, so last year, um, talking about the November election in the fall, which was obviously different than a town election, we had approximately 4,700 people um, request a mail ballot. So very high number. We have a, um, about 11,700 registered voters. So high percentage that requested a ballot by mail and the vast majority that requested it actually returned it and voted. Um, so, you know, those are, you know, record-breaking numbers of mail-in um, voting, and we saw that all across the, the state. Obviously, the town election is different in volume. Um, we did have about 800 people request ballots last year at our town election, which was held the end of June. It was postponed because of the pandemic. This year, um, I think we've received about 100 requests to date, so the volume's certainly a bit lower, um, which is understandable given that many folks are vaccinated now and there's probably a better comfort level um, to actually go vote in person. And I, I think the vast majority of folks still enjoy that in-person experience, although the convenience of the mail-in voting is certainly, I think, here to stay. And, um, you know, people do like that, especially if they're out of town or it's just challenging for them to get to the polling place. Just curious, just curious. Sure. My excellent question. It, you know, because it, it's true. I mean, you know, it, it was just such a different experience last year and it just opened up, I think, possibilities for people that they kind of never thought of before. But I think if people really are dying to just see each other again. Yes. And you may have people just coming, even with their masks on, right? Because, 
who knows? Who knows? Yeah, the socialization, as uh, Liz well well knows, is so important for uh, people, and having not had that ability for so many uh, well over a year now, um, any public event where you might get to see a neighbor at least wave at a distance is uh, <laughs> nice to uh, nice to have that experience. Like a big deal. Can't hear you, Liz. Sorry about that. Um, coming out to town meeting this Saturday is really important. You'll we'll get to see people. You'll see Andy there. I'll be there. Town staff from other department heads will be there. Um, make sure you come and wave and get out there and vote on May 11th. So thank you very much for this, Andy. This is really great. Liz, thank you. You know, we, once again, you 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 inevitably find great people, and this one's like a really important one. Like right now that people really be, become aware of this and i and once again folks you know you get to see you, they're going to have masks on but you get to see people you haven't seen for a long time right and starts feeling like you know we're part of a normal society again so please if you for, you know frank and mary out there if you get a chance please go out and vote and go to town meeting they're always entertaining they're always entertaining you know and you know and it's a surprise it's like a movie and you don't know how long it's going to go right <laughs> Very true. So, Andy, thank you very much. Liz, thank you very much, folks. Thank we you. will, um, and thanks, Liz, for finding these great people. And we'll look, folks. We'll see. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>